Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me speaking to you here again. I would like to have a special thanks to the Federal Foreign Office and the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Action for convening this ninth Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue and for, for inviting me to address all of you. I can have put it better as um, our African champion did President Ruto for the clean energy transition, that there is no transition without Africa. And this notion that the global north can develop to a part of net zero and leave a billion people in energy poverty is just not acceptable. I'd also like to thank my um, Minister of Power, Minister of Power in Nigeria, uh, Minister Abubakar Aliu, for his continued drive to show that clean energy isn't a nice to have, but it's a way of life for Africa's largest economy. Today, it is more important than ever to drive forward the global energy transition. In the interest of climate change mitigation, energy security, economic diversification, and also development. We are currently at a time of great uncertainty that has led to three-dimensional crises all happening at the same time. That is food, energy, and finance, greatly affecting some of the world's most vulnerable people, countries, and economies. Pushing millions back into poverty, especially energy poverty. And energy poverty is something we don't speak about enough. Today on my continent in Africa, the average African that has energy has about 404 kilowatt hours compared to the average American that has about 19, sorry, 13,000 kilowatt hours. So already it is unjust. Already being born black African like myself, you're 20 times at a disadvantage as anybody else on earth because you cannot develop without energy. It is, however, an opportunity to change how the world perceives energy transition and energy security. We are already witnessing the global energy landscape changing dramatically. For example, renewable energy capacity in the EU is projected to double between 2022 and 2027. 2027. This is great. Similarly, a commitment towards energy transition, spoken very well by President Ruto, is happening in developing countries, both in Asia and Africa, with much less resources. However, it is important to stress that the energy crisis is truly global. It does affect Europe and the global north, but it also affects emerging and developing countries. The energy transition in developing countries includes to transition out of poverty, like I said, transitioning towards development, transitioning towards growth, transitioning sustainably, as we have found because most of us in developed countries, developing countries are already using low carbon. Global investments in renewable energy reached a record high in 2022. There was about $0.5 trillion spent but that only represented 40% less of the average investment that we need every year. But what was most striking with this development was that in absolute terms, Sub-Saharan Africa only received 1.5% of that global investment. When you talk about countries being priority, when you talk about the development case, I really want to put that in context. So 15% of the world's population only received 1.5% of the renewable energy investment. And this really has to change. The disparity in renewable energy financing received by the developed versus the developing countries has increased significantly over the past six years. It is for this reason that we need to be cre creative and develop new approaches to ensure that we leave no one behind when it comes to energy transition. This is why in, we have to be specific in context. We have to help countries develop country-specific solutions because no one transition will be the same dependent on country. So you just can't take something from the global north and put it in the global south and just assume it's going to work. We also we have to respond to the global needs and the, and the global phenomenon when it comes to national programs. And I'm really happy that President Ruto um, spoken about the 
carbon market. We're working very hard with his team as well to really push forward the African Carbon Market Initiative, which was launched at COP27 with President Ruto and eight other presidents. It's really important that we see climate finance emerge as an important source of capital to really drive climate ambition. The African Carbon Market Initiative has very, very aggressive targets. One is to produce 300 million carbon credits annually by 2030 and 1.5 billion credits annually by 2050 to unlock 6 billion in revenue by 2030 and over 120 billion by 2050 for Africa to support the transition. It supports 30 million jobs on the continent by 2030 and it can support 110 million jobs by 2050. It is very, very key and important that we drive this initiative. And I'm very happy that Kenya will be the first country with the Kenyan activation plan, hopefully be launched in September. Ladies and gentlemen, it is critical when we develop solutions that we look at the continent as also a green continent, a continent for green industry. We have also launched what we call the Renewable Energy Manufacturing Initiative for Africa and also for Asia, looking at the manufacturing of PV solar, lithium batteries, and two-wheelers as well. It is, it's critical to understand that the continent should not be seen as an extractive continent, but a continent that can really add value. In working towards the energy transition, we need to recognize the differing energy realities in different parts of the world and ensuring that the energy transition pathways allowed us to have differentiated approaches to our common goals. All governments, and I really repeat this, all governments need to prepare energy transition plans that take into consideration their reality to green growth. This is crit a critical policy tool and investment tool. It delivers affordable, reliable, and clean energy for people who don't have energy. And when I talk about reliable energy, I also mean electrification and clean cooking. Many developing countries have already demonstrated the willingness to do that with their leadership. I spoke about my country, Nigeria. We have Kenya, who's developing their green growth plan as being a real master for green industry on the continent. We've got Ghana, and we also have Barbados. And I'd like to go a little bit off script by how important these energy transition plans are. The one that was launched by President Buhari at COP26 showcased the whole of economy change that we're asking governments to do. This isn't just the renewables going to the power sector. This is what happens to your transport sector, to your work sector, how you build your buildings, what happens to clean cooking. It's a whole of economy point of view. What it also does, it gives you the price tag of how much it will cost. In my country, Nigeria, it will cost $1.9 trillion for Nigeria to reach net zero by 2060, of which 410 billion of this will be above business as usual spending. These numbers are really important where we all come together in COPs and try and get 100 billion. That is just not gonna cut it. And we can't do that without public and private investment. And that is what this is. It's a real investment opportunity. So having said that, the importance of energy transition plans and, and countries like Germany supporting, who already have such a strong base with BMZ, GIZ, KFW already investing in Africa, we feel would be a really great thing for the transition. I would like to reiterate that the energy transition to succeed, no one, ha no one can be left behind. And in closing, we must prioritize diverse thinking and really be truly inclusive when we make these solutions. We cannot have an energy transition that replicates the past inequalities, the inequalities with women, the inequalities with workers, and the inequalities with entire communities. The energy transition must respond to people. It has to be people-centered. You can't have an energy transition without thinking about economic growth and development. I look to all of you leaders in the next few days to give us the solutions we need. We are committed in the UN family and also Sustainable Energy for All to help any of these countries deliver their energy access and their energy transition goals. Thank you so much for listening.